Hello puppy. So I've been wanting to share with you what I did to customize my truck for my dog Christina. I keep getting pulled away from that because of life. And after a few more changes were made, I had to drop everything and just do it. So here is what I did to build confidence in my puppy to go everywhere I do. I have a 2016 Chevy Silverado 2500. Basically, I had to create an area for her where she feels safe, relaxed, has fun, sleeps, and I know is actually safe for her. My biggest concern is her safety. And looking back on it, I took a little too long to complete it, but I am glad we added these final steps. This whole experience of living with her has been training for both of us. I know, this one's difficult for you, right? Because you're so excited, I understand. We still gotta do it. We gotta sit and wait. No, sit and wait for me. You gotta wait, 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 wait. Sit and wait, sit and wait. Just sit and wait, sit and wait. You gotta wait for me, Chrissy. You gotta, no, sit. You gotta keep sitting, Christy. And then, okay, all right. Wait, no, oh, darn it. That was a total fail. Kind of on me and you. Hey. Hey. All right, never mind. Okay. We'll start with the creation of what we've been calling the surfboard. It's a platform adjacent to the seat that fills in the area where we put our legs. Imagine riding in the back of a speeding moving truck while standing on a dresser. She would bump her face into the dashboard, stumble and fall through gaps in the seats and lose her balance. Her weight was breaking corners to any platform I made, and she just looked scared. And she loved sticking her head out the window, but we'll get to that later. Life for Christy is all face first, and I had to correct these issues. I used insulation board material because it's easy to cut into shape and sturdy yet padded and light. Let me pick you up again. I went through a few prototypes to make it right over a few weeks before having a finished model. When I felt good about the latest design, I used it as the final model. I hollowed out a cavity in the bottom, left a half inch border on the sides and made it one inch deep. The board is two inch thick styrofoam and it made a mess. The shop vac was handy to have. I glued a one inch thick wood board, cut the size, into the cavity. I then placed unused laminate floorboards, similar to pergo tiles, on the surface with wood glue. Also cut the size. I wrapped the whole thing with Gorilla Tape, and last, I grabbed two poles from an old storage shelf and cut those to size. I went through a few of those as well. Height is important. I placed them on the underside closer to the middle end, screwed them into the wood board underneath. For the base, I used a three gallon bucket filled with sand. It weighs about 40 pounds, heavy enough to stay in place, and light enough to move when I need to use the seat. The edges had to be just right also, leaving no gaps and locking in the place when I move the seat and secure it against the dashboard. There could be no gaps for her to fall into or she would not feel safe here, which I figure most of the balance comes from her confidence in this whole thing. And it was done. The surfboard. But she was still stumbling from sliding around on the laminate surface. We bought a doormat with a rubber bottom, but she was still sliding around. We then found an affordable rubber mat, rubber on both sides. The surfboard doesn't rock out of place because it's held there between the seat and the dash. The base below increases stability. The two legs on the inside edge also help keep it sturdy and stable. She is 65 pounds and the board has to withstand her weight on a regular basis and it has to be solid for her stability. Now the next part I am both proud of and a little embarrassed about. It's the seat belt and I should have done it way sooner than I did. But it's done now and I'm glad we have it. I want her seatbelt to lock down in a situation like ours does, but that's on the truck system, so she had to also be on that same system. So while cleaning the truck the last time, I finally looked for the bolt connecting the middle seatbelt to the seat. I found a plastic cover and the bolt behind it. Nope, not quick than enough. Okay, we're gonna need a fiber. There it is. It's 
gonna release it from there. I bought the star bit needed to remove it. All right, we got this bit from the hardware store. Try this out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the torque I need from this angle. Yeah, definitely not. Holy cow, I think we got it. Voila! Seatbelt for Chrissy. Now, we can hook Chrissy up to that seatbelt. We don't have to worry about seatbelt anymore. Once removed, I bought two latches for the end, one to connect the other which swivels and connects quickly and easily like a leash. So now it doesn't bind up every time she turns around and a little pen sized rod at the mouth keeps it from binding up as well. Now we just let the buckle hang, it doesn't bother us anymore. I could put this all back together in under 5 minutes and didn't have to destroy anything to implement these changes. She uses it with the harness that I use to walk her with now because I think it's most comfortable for her and she pulls way less nowadays. That's a perfect mix for a dog. Yeah man, it's working out good. How old is she? She's two and a half. It's also a lot tougher than the ones they sell with the seatbelts for dogs. So she's ready to walk, ride, or just pass out. And last but not least is the gear shift lever she destroyed over two years ago. I had just started bringing her out with me in the truck and had to run in the Best Buy for 10 minutes. She didn't like that, so she started to eat the truck. I found a replacement online through a dealer my neighbor suggested, and that sat around for another year. After freeing up the seatbelt for her, I finally decided to replace it and make a video about it. And I have been left high and dry many times with the wrong information about the wrong year and model, or just some BS. These videos all showed you how to remove the dashboard, the steering wheel, and even safety clips and tips on not blowing up the airbag, which would suck. And they were all replacing the entire mechanism, not just the lever. So I did it my way, which is also scary, but not as scary. I could see the bolt just inside the rubber sleeve at the base. I tried for a few days to remove the bolt, but it was stripping and it would not budge. If I ruined this bolt, I would have to replace the whole mechanism and do all that other stuff. I took some close-up pictures to see it better, and at first I thought they were blurry, but I washed the bolt with a Q-tip and saw that it was a star bit, not a hex bit like a video said. Now I could remove the bolt and pull out the lever. Got some blue compound in there, which is probably the magic sauce making it stick so much. Let's see if it pulls right out. It does kind of, but this cord's holding it. some scissors and a razor blade. Wow, I can't believe we might actually get this done. To connect the new wire for the tow assist control, I cut it and used UI2 connectors from my old job to splice it to the existing wire. I made an incision on the outer. Cut that off. I think these are Pretty good. I hope those are the right ones. Alright, now we gotta oh, put beans on those other ones. Alright, this cord's hooked up. We're just gonna leave the cord out, I guess. Remove the rubber sleeve to tuck it into the steering column cavity. Put the sleeve back in the place. And voila! I now have a gear shift lever 
and it works with tow assist. Next, I will be buying a face mask for Christy to protect her eyes while she's face cruising out the window. I've seen them in some videos and we want it. As of lately, I have been calling out stops and goes and turns to teach her what's what. Red means stop and green means go. She looks up at the lights, braces herself for what we're about to do, and I believe I have taught her stop, go, red, green, right, and left. I can see her bracing for whatever is coming, and she also has developed her own tricks to increase balance, like resting her chin on the dashboard or the rear view mirror. And I said it earlier, I don't trust other people and or videos to get anything done right the first time. But it's a great source for ideas, knowledge, and a good starting point for most projects that I'm unfamiliar with. Just be ready to make mistakes, make changes, and make your project work for you and your furry buddy. And be ready for more hair, bad drivers, dog lovers at red lights, and more training your dog to sit, sit, sit. Keep waiting, Christy, wait for me. No, sit and wait. You gotta wait the whole time till I stay And away. don't spray your windshield until you know where her face is. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And thanks again.